I believe ARC 3.0 will be the strongest subclass we've seen yet. Okay, that's a big statement for something we know nothing about. But let me explain why I believe ARC 3.0 is going to be lethal in PvP. Welcome back to the channel, guys. I'm Bravex Hero, and today we're going to be talking about why I believe ARC 3.0 will be much stronger than Solar and Void 3.0. Now, we currently don't have any information on Arc 3.0, but after seeing the changes Bungie made with Void and Solar, we can get a general idea on how this revamp may work. So yes, guys, this is speculation. Now, with this being a complete subclass revamp, I will be discussing which exotics might climb up the ranks in both PvP and PvE. Lastly, I will be timestamping all topics down below, so feel free to jump around to whichever character or ability piques your interest. But with that, grab your tinfoil hats and let's get into it. Before we get into any of the subclasses and characters, keep in mind that this is pure speculation, but I do have a track record of being somewhat on point or close enough to it. Now it's still unknown what type of damage will be tied to Arc 3.0. With Void, we got Volatile and Weakened. And with Solar, we got scorched. As for Ark, we don't know, and it'll be a little shocking when we do find out. Can I get a drum beat? You guys see what I did there? Shocking. Because guys, it's probably going to be shocking. Now, I will say that it is pretty obvious on how Ark 3.0 is going to work inside of the game. With it revolving around electricity, one can only speculate and think that it's going to be focused on chain lightning abilities. Similar to what we have with Ark web grenades from Warlocks, and Dune Marchers with Titans. Lastly, we need to remember that with the release of Arc 3.0, players are going to have access to all Arc grenades. That includes each character having access to Flux grenades. So Warlocks and Titans rejoice, you will have the ability to one-hit kill enemies with a Flux grenade. Now getting started with everyone's favorite character, the Hunter. When Void 3.0 was released, players immediately noticed that the subclass changed from basic skill trees to fully customizable subclasses, including fragments and aspects. Aside from the addition of aspects and fragments, players did see a change in some of the original abilities. Getting started with Hunters, with Void 3.0, Hunters acquired a new dodge animation, which arrived in the form of an aspect. Rather than having the two common dodges we're used to, players were introduced to Vanishing Step. This new dodge animation integrates Marksman's and Gambler's dodge into an aggressive sidestep but it also allows the player to go invisible. Lastly, similar to what we saw with the Stasis subclass, Hunters gained the ability to Quick Fall. By utilizing the aspect Trapper's Ambush, this allows Hunters to descend from the air in a Quick Fall, which consumes a smoke bomb, making them invisible and damaging any nearby enemies. Now that's just Void 3.0. When Solar 3.0 was released, players were again introduced to a new dodge ability the Acrobats Dodge. This is a new dodge animation all on its own. Lastly, Solar Hunters gained the aspect Gunpowder Gamble, in which defeating targets with abilities, solar debuffs, and solar weapon charges up an explosive that can be thrown. Now, with that, we can kind of get a general idea on how Arc 3.0 will be for Hunters. I think we'll be seeing a new dodge animation. Now, what will that be? I'm not really sure, but if I had a guess, I really think Bungie is going to lean into the lightning reflexes and give players the ability to have an extended slide ability similar to what we saw in Destiny 1. Now, when it comes to a new ability like Trapper's Ambush and Gunpowder Gamble, Bungie has two solid options from either Tempest Strike, which is currently on the way of the current skill tree, or Bungie can always go with a stronger melee ability with either Disorienting Blow or Combat Flow all of which revolve around the Hunter's melee ability, which is technically the identity of the subclass. But let's talk about combining the skill trees. With each revamp, Bungie allows players to customize their skill tree. For instance, previously players using Spectre Blades did not have access to Vanishing Step. But with the revamp, players can now have both Spectre Blades and Vanishing Step. This brings us into Arc 3.0. I think the build crafting for Arc Hunter is going to be on another level. Imagine if you will. Utilizing the perks Focus Breathing paired alongside Tempest Strike and Deadly Reach. Or being able to utilize Whirlwind Guard, but rather it being tied to Way of the Current, you can now build craft into any of the skill trees. Now here are some exotics you might want to keep an eye on for when Arc 3.0 launches. Number 1 is going to be the Lucky Raspberry. If Bungie focuses on players dealing Arc damage, 
This is one exotic I can see getting a lot more playtime next season. And number two, we have the exotic gauntlet Shinobu's Vows. When R3.0 launches, and if we get a fragment that is focused around dealing arc damage, this is one exotic that can deal that damage. Moving into Warlocks, with Void 3.0, Warlocks were given several new abilities. For starters, we were introduced to a new battle buddy. That is none other than the Child of the Old Gods aspect. This ability is very interesting. It's activated when players activate their class ability. Yes guys, this is similar to what we have with the Attunement of Elements subclass, in which players can summon an Arxel when they activate their class ability. Lastly, players were introduced to a new melee ability, the Pocket Singularity. This not only unleashes a ball of unstable void energy, but it also pushes away enemies, making them volatile. To be honest guys, void is pretty deadly for Warlocks. Now with Solar 3.0, players were introduced to a new melee ability, Incinerator Snap, in which Solar Warlocks can snap their fingers to unleash a fan of burning sparks. Also, rather than Phoenix Dive being tied to a specific skill tree, players can now use this ability in place of their class ability. But this brings us into Arc 3.0 and what I believe Warlocks will be getting. For starters, in our current Arc subclasses, in the Attunement of Conduction, we have perks like Chain Lightning and Arc Web, which I feel is going to be the main focus of Arc 3.0. And if Bungie decides to revamp some of the old abilities, I can see the perk Arc Soul being moved into the Aspect Department. This would be super interesting, guys, to see Chaos Reach Warlocks summoning Battle Buddies. But that doesn't even include the perk Ionic Trace. Alright guys, picture this. You summon a Battle Buddy to the field, and you start racking up a bunch of kills. Then you start collecting those Ionic Traces. That's going to give you Ability Energy. Do you see this energy there? Now, one of the biggest drawbacks for Stormcaller Warlock, more specifically the Attunement of Control subclass, is the very lackluster super. Sure, it does have the perk landfall, but roaming around the map, you can easily get gunned down. Now, with the merge of subclasses, I can see the perk Ionic Blink being available on both Stormcaller trees. Now, let's talk about some exotics that you might want to keep an eye on. Number one is going to be the Crown of Tempest. This exotic helmet can really be amplified if Bungie really leans in to the whole arc chaining. Number two is going to be the exotic gauntlet, the Getaway Artist. With all arc subclasses being merged, being able to stack this exotic with the perk Ionic Trace might be something that becomes meta next season. Now for our sleeper exotic. Yes guys, a sleeper exotic. Vesper of Radius. Okay, this is a bad exotic. It falls in that category of exotics people forgot about. But with Arc 3.0 being focused around chained Arc Lightning, I would love for this exotic to get revamped or maybe synergize better with the subclass. Now switching gears and hopping over to the punchy boys, the Titans. We've seen a lot of changes for both Void 3.0 and Solar 3.0. For starters, with Void 3.0, Titans gain the ability to get an overshield when they activate their class ability. And they also gain a new melee attack. Rather than the traditional shield bash, they can now toss a Void Shield in which if they hit a target with it, it will grant them an overshield. As for Solar 3.0, Similar to the Arc Strider's Tempest Strike, Titans got something very similar. They now have the perk Consecration. This now brings us into Arc 3.0. Bungie has a lot of options they can go with. I'm pretty sure players will have the choice between Traditional Shoulder Charge or Ballistic Slam, which is great. Some players love using the perk Ballistic Slam, but they may not be a fan of the Thunder Crash super ability. But with the merge of all Arc subclasses, it'd be really interesting to see players utilizing Fist of Havoc and Ballistic Slam. In the current meta, Arc Titans are still viable. They have solid options in the Code of the Juggernaut subclass. With perks such as Knockout and Frontal Assault, I can only imagine how Bungie is going to merge Code of the Missile with Code of the Juggernaut. As for exotics, number one is going to be the Armamentarium. Having double grenades paired alongside something like the Flux Grenades, double one-hit kill grenades is going to be crazy next season. But again, if Bungie really leans into the whole chained lightning abilities, I can see even more real estate for something like the Dune Marchers or the Syntheseps. And there you have it. I don't usually make speculation videos, but as you can tell, I'm super excited for Arc 3.0. With Arc still being viable in the current meta, I can only imagine how much stronger it's going to be next season. Again guys, I don't normally make speculation videos, so if you enjoyed today's video, 
and you'd like to see more videos like this, a like is greatly appreciated. But with that, I appreciate you all stopping by and hanging out. You guys have a good one and I will see you in the next video.